what we got here is a um, is a piece of glue lamb teak. It's three by six, which is a blank. It's just a rough blank for a uh, a kitchen island. Uh, it's an island because it's three feet wide instead of 25 inches wide. Um, I got this at Lumber Liquidators. I don't remember what it cost. It's rough, hadn't been finished. It's teak, so it's a nice, real nice hunk of goodness here. Um, this is a piece of stock that I'm going to use for the kitchen, a uh, little kitchen dinette countertop and the bathroom countertop, so they match. And then the remnants, which should be quite a few remnants, we use for, uh, I don't know, shelves. It's a pretty piece of wood, so we'll use it for uh, pieces of wood around the place that, that can be seen. Um, got this uh, cardboard cutout. I use this to uh, uh, first make my wife happy about what the countertop's going to look like, and second to move it around on the on the blank because you know the whole blank isn't created equal. There are some really beautiful spots and there are some ugly spots. For instance, there's a little defect right here we don't want to use. So you can move this around on the blank to make sure you're uh, extracting the best wood out of the blank and then you can see what's going to be left over. For instance, we're going to use the piece that's left over for the bathroom uh, countertop. and. Um, and like that. So I think uh, the next thing you'll see is me just cutting the hell out of this thing, you know, whack, 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 and then uh, cutting some curves. And, uh, and then uh, cutting out the hole for the uh, uh, sunken uh, cooktop that's embedded in the, in the countertop. I'm going to do this by hand. I don't have a table saw or a jig big enough to cut something this big, so I'm going to do it, cut it by hand. How do you get straight cuts by hand? You use a a uh, skill saw cutting jig using this uh, four foot. Um, this is the bathroom sink. I'm using a four foot piece of steel, and I'll cut against that, and it'll it'll be a nice. And I'm using a fine blade, so it should be a almost as uh, good a cut as you can get on a table saw. Close, but not as good. Uh, the longest edge I'm going to put against the wall and the edges that are visible, I'll go ahead and cut them slightly proud and then sand them back to smoothness. And that's pretty much it with this big ass piece of goodness here. After that frenetic bit of cutting and time lapse, here we go. A uh, kitchen uh, countertop. Looks pretty good. Now we'll go ahead and uh, mark, drill, and cut out the, the uh, area for the embedded um, cooktop.
Okay, I've taken the piece of goodness here and uh, marked where the cutout goes. It's always a good idea to just make sure you've marked it right because indeed I had marked it wrong. Um, and I'm just going to leave a half an inch slightly more around the edge of this thing for the hole so it sits down in and has at least a half an inch lip to lock into um, to support the um, cooktop. This is a uh, an Eno cooktop. It's stainless steel. It's really made for a boat. It's out of the uh, boating industry. I got this from uh, West Marine. Two burner, small burner, large burner. It's all stainless steel and uh, should work just fine for propane. Now I'll flip it to time lapse. We'll drill four holes and then cut out the cut out the hole. <clears throat> Well, there we have a cooktop, nicely embedded in the in the countertop. With a half inch lip all around, and this thing just happens to sit an inch and a half deep and it has a plate on the bottom so I can I can add a uh, plate to that, screw it into the bottom so it'll be uh, supported from the inside and uh, supported on the outside by a, by a half inch lip. Pretty cool. Now I flip the table, the countertop upside down. This is a frame I've already built. It's glued and screwed, the right dimensions. And this frame will be secured to the bottom of the countertop. This edge goes uh, into the wall and we screwed from the other side or we screwed from this side into the wall so that will support um, any wonkiness and then it sits on four legs like this Oh, here I've got the frame beside the sink. I already built the uh, the frame for this great big giant uh, country sink. Uh, it's hugely, it's massive, and I'll tie it into the um, frame of the bus with steel straps, just in case we hit something. That sink doesn't. I mean, it weighs 150 pounds. It's a big country. Um, ceramic sink. I mean it go right through the windshield so I'm, I'm strapping the sink to the frame. That's the reason why this framing is so massive with steel straps. So at least if we're going to crash this thing is not flying around like a uh, like a great big rock. And the frame around that thing is massive so um, by the time the frame is secured to the um, 
bus frame and then the sink is secured to the um, framing of, of the walls it'll be it'll be there for good plus you see this um, this is an old-timey bridge uh, faucet I got it from uh, American Standard and then had a um, a bumper guy a chrome bumper guy strip it down to the uh, down to the brass and so it's a brass bridge fitting but it's got modern quarter turn valves so it's uh, pretty cool and the bathroom is the same way it's a it's an American Standard chrome um, plumbing fitting with that I had the bumper guy strip it down to the uh, the uh, brass underneath so it's, it'll, it looks old timey it's pretty cool <clears throat> anyways here's a here's the frame for the uh, countertop it just fits over top of the fridge this is a truck fridge you can see them on the internet um, standard truck fridge the truckers put them in their trucks and it's set up for either uh, 12 volts or 120 volts uh, it senses what's going on and uses uh, 12 volts until 120 volts is available and then flips over to the 120 volts. Anyways, this is what the... This is what the countertop looks like. Looks like on there. Pretty nice up here and it's just a uh, about three quarters of an inch higher than the sink so that you know you can just brush stuff into the sink and um, I'll go ahead and after I process this top it has to be sanded I'll put a chamfer around this and then I'll smooth out the uh, curves and then secure it to the frame and um, and then tie the legs into the floor so the whole thing is solid and then tie the frame into the uh, wall frame so I think it's pretty cool, put this little lip here you open the fridge take stuff out, put it there close the fridge and then do the cooking let's drop the cooktop in, see what that looks like Looks pretty good. It is uh, definitely adequate. What I'll do is I'll put a uh, an aluminum uh, splash guard, heat guard against the wall, so the uh, pans will be pretty close to the wall when it's cooking. But I wanted as much counter space as possible, and that's that's just enough. It's more than you get in a boat. Uh, it's not an, not as much as you see in a lot of modern RVs or schoolies, which just have linear feet of countertop. But um, you know, when you use up 10 feet of your bus with a garage, um, all the space starts to compress. So this is uh, pretty much the kitchen, uh, mostly done, and uh, that's it. You know what? That wasn't enough carpentry. I think we need some more.
carpentry. 